Tuesday, it's Tuesday, it's Tuesday. So let's talk all about toes today. Yay! My favorite subject. I am Jamie Allen Bishop here with Soul Heart Entertainment to talk to you live about toes. So do you love toes? Do you hate toes? Do toes freak you out? Do they make you happy? Do they make you sad? What's going on with you and toes? Tell me <laughs> right in the comments below. Hi, hun. So glad you're here. Glad you found me. Is it, I, I have a question. Is it posting in the event or is it posting in, um, on the actual page? So I, we're trying to figure some of these technical difficulties out. Every time Facebook updates the way that they do things, there's a little learning curve, right? You know, hey, it is what it is. You just show up anyway, do your best, and keep on keeping on, right? So I wrote a, I wrote a little blog today about how our bodies hold our stories, the stories that we tell ourselves in our brains and how that ends up affecting our body in the state of illness or dis-ease that is associated with how we hold those thoughts, feelings, and emotions. So, for example, in my post today, I explained that I have this right shoulder that's, it's kind of a bum shoulder. Oh good, I, okay, well as long as it's announcing that there's a live video, that's okay with me. So thank you for letting me know about that. So in my right shoulder, which is my external self or my yang self, my shoulder is in pain, okay? So pain is a sign and symbol and symptom in the metaphysical world of how we're holding on to something that is no longer serving us. So whatever that is, whatever it looks like, depending on the body type that it's, or the bot, not the body type, the body location that it's showing up on, it, it has to do with kind of those chakra systems, okay? So the, the shoulders are kind of this, the burden of responsibility, right? So it's this idea that we're carrying the weight of the world on our shoulders, okay? So it shows up that way. Um, and what ends up happening if you're in a state, and by you, I'm actually talking about myself right now because my right shoulder is in pain right now. It is in pain when I wake up. It is in pain all the time. So I'm just explaining to you what that means in the metaphysical world and what I'm doing about it to release that pain. So in pain, it's just our body's way of reminding us to let go, let go of whatever it is that's no longer serving us. So because it's on the shoulder and because the shoulder is somewhere between the throat chakra and the heart chakra, there's some stuff going on with me around the responsibility, the burden of responsibility, right? I always think of Atlas, you know, holding the weight of the world on his shoulders. And that's the image that comes to mind. So when that image comes to mind, what it looks like on my shoulder when it shows up in pain like that is a, a dis-ease or an ill-at-ease situation around somewhere between my throat chakra and my heart chakra around the responsibilities that I carry for me, right? So somewhere in my makeup, there's a story going on there that, oh, hi, Veronica, thank you so much for joining. So glad you're here. If you have any questions about toes or toe reading, let me know in the comments. Otherwise, I'm just kind of talking a little bit about how we carry pain and what what that looks like in the metaphysical world and uh, what I do about it for myself when I come up with something that doesn't serve me anymore. So this burden of responsibility, shoulder pain, it's my external self because it's on this right side of me. Um, and if and if the camera's, the camera's reversed, so it may look like I'm pointing to the left side of me, but indeed this is my right side. <laughs> um, anyway, so it's this external self, it's the burden of responsibility, it's 
the weight of the world on my shoulders. It's this idea that I have, or it's this story somewhere in my mind's eye that I'm telling myself that's no longer serving me. And that's why it's showing up in pain. So one of the things that I do to walk myself through releasing that, releasing whatever idea is no longer serving me, is to look at my toes. And that's why toe reading is such a powerful tool. So in toe reading, we're looking at the location of this on our, on our toes. So if we're looking at the bottom of the toes and or the bottom of the feet, okay? So if the feet are like this and the thumbs are my big toes and right down there is where the spine shows up, the right side versus the left side is gonna show up as where it shows up. So guess what's happening is, and um, I, I know it's reversed, so you're just gonna have to trust me that it's left versus right, but this is the right side and this is where the shoulder is, okay? So somewhere between action and relationship, I'm holding on to something that's not serving me anywhere. Any, it's not serving my highest purpose path anymore. So I have to get to the bottom of that. And one of the ways that I do that for myself and for my clients is to use that EFT, which is the emotional freedom technique. It's tapping. Sometimes it works beautifully. Sometimes we ha it takes a little bit of time to get there. But ultimately speaking, tapping is this idea that our emotional state shows up in our physical manifestation in our body somewhere. So by tapping on those meridian points to kind of go down the rabbit hole, if you will, of what our stories are and how they're showing up in our lives and what that looks like for us, we have to start at the basics, start at the beginning, and then we delve a little bit deeper and a little bit deeper and a little bit deeper into belief systems that are so false. It's so funny when I do EFT on myself, how how the stories show up. And I think to myself, I don't even believe that. Why is that story keep showing up for me? So somewhere in my body, I believe it. Somewhere in my mind, I believe it. And so tapping on it allows us to release that energy from our bodies that's no longer serving us. Also, oh, hi, Julie, so glad you're here. Great, thank you for joining. If you have any questions or comments or whatever about toes or feet, please let me know. I would love to answer them. Uh, so this, this burden of responsibility that's showing up as pain in my, in my right shoulder is about releasing forgiveness work, if you will, around responsibilities. And it's responsibilities both today and maybe it's responsibilities from today that are reminding me of things that have happened in the past that didn't that I need to just let go of. I need to do a little forgiveness work, kind of go there in my mind's eye of the stories that I've been telling myself around responsibility and what that looks like. Um, just to be completely candid, what's coming to me intuitively right now is um, the idea that men are supposed to be the providers. Ugh, like I hate that I even, that I even might be thinking that in, oh, hi, Cindy Rose, so glad you're here. Thank you for joining. So I hate that I'm even contemplating that that may be something that my body has held on to and that is that needs to be released but somewhere in there that's still showing up for me so i need to do a little bit of forgiveness work to release that thanks babe yeah. my honey just uh picked up some new toes toe pictures for me so that i can use them tonight awesome thank you <laughs> he's so silly um all right, so we will start with the Little Toe Reading Map. And if you're curious about what this looks like in person or you want to print it out or whatever, you can get on in the files category in the Soul Heart Entertainment page and you can get a hold of this map yourself. 
Someday I'll have it professionally developed, but you know, for now, this works, right? So it's this idea that our right side, and I know it's reversed, just bear with me. The right side is our yang side, it's our external self side. The left side is our yin side, or our internal self side. That one is not reversed. Anytime a, well, but the right, my husband's saying it's not reversed. It's not reversed because I've printed it backwards so that it looks correct to you, but you'll notice that the right side is on the left and the left no, side not. is on, the, oh, it's not? No. <gasps> He's showing me it. He's telling me it's showing up good. Oh, yay. Well, maybe I've, maybe I've figured out how to get this to work. <gasps> yay. Oh my gosh, this is exciting. Well, hopefully this will be a new leaf we've turned over in the whole toe reading online. Anyway, back to what this map says. So when toes or toenails lean toward the big toe, okay, so whether it's that's that way on the left side, it's that way on the right side, that is where we carry our past stories. If the toes or toenails lean to the outside, that is where we carry our future stories, okay? And the out by the outside, I mean the baby toes, okay? So if they're leaning toward the baby toes, that's all about how we're showing up for uh, the future, okay? So we might have these. So one of the things that I work with when I work with entrepreneurs is I work with this vision around what that looks like for them, what great success in their entrepreneurial business looks like. And oftentimes it's just outside of their reach. So like they've created some momentum, it's starting to look the way that it's supposed to, and then it sort of plateaus into this, like you can't, you can't get to the golden egg, right? Of, of what exactly it is that you want. So one of the things that I suggest is to get, get a hold of our future speak. Okay, that's, that's the way that I refer to it. So get a, get a good grasp on where it is that your words coming out of your mouth or the thoughts in your head or both are in the future tense rather than in that present tense, okay? So what this might look like is, you know, someday I'll get to that or my, I really want to create X, Y, or Z. Okay, so those desires and goals are great, but you're keeping them out in the future instead of energetically bringing them to you right here, right now. Does that make sense? If it makes sense, give me some likes or whatever in the, you know, give me some thumbs up, whatever feels good for you, but give me some feedback so I know I'm, I'm making sense to you. Otherwise, I'll just be babbling about stuff that may or may not make sense, and I don't wanna do that. Okay, so the other map that I want to show you that may not show up correctly because I don't know if it's the right, I don't, I don't think it's, it's not reversed. So yeah, no, that's showing up reversed for you. But you can get a good idea of what it means. The idea that, okay, so in the metaphysical world, our bodies hold on to the stories that we tell ourselves. Okay, that's just the idea. The way to get over that energetic idea, the stories that we tell ourselves, which are, everything's energy in the world. If you, if you can grasp that concept, all of this metaphysical stuff makes so much more sense, okay? So if you, if you think of humans and animals and trees and whatever else as atoms and atoms are all charged particles right you can grasp the concept that our energies either bounce off each other are attracted to each other or are repelled from each other right it's it it makes so much more sense when we think about it that way it gives me head to toe goosebumps just to just to talk about it but so this idea of the chakra system within a human body it, in a state of balance can create more momentum, more flow, easier experiences, and just that you're, you're kind of 
in the flow is what everybody calls it, in the flow around creating this lifestyle that you just are so excited to participate in, right? You cannot wait to get up in the morning to get started on this fabulous life that you've started leading. So, of course, that shows up on the toes. So we're talking toe reading here. So where the, um, where the third eye and crown chakra show up is on that big toe, where that throat and heart chakra shows up is on the second toe. The third toe is all about between the heart chakra and the solar plexus. The fourth toe or the relationship toe is about the solar plexus and the sacral chakra. And the fifth toe, which is the baby toe, is somewhere between the sacral chakra and the root chakra. So if you look and compare the map of the toes with that map that I just showed you about where those chakras show up, you can see that if you're having faith and trust issues, you're going to have a block in your root and sacral chakras. Okay? So there's there's energy to be to be, you know, moved or adjusted in those areas of your life. So what it actually looks like, physically looks like is you can see on so the faith and trust toe is our left side, which is our internal self side. And I think that most people that would be attracted to the idea of toe reading are people that are working on self-healing or maybe they are working in the industry of self-healing, but somehow we, we believe and understand the concepts that when we're good inside, our outside world reflects that, right? Okay, so if we look at this left foot and we look at that baby toe under there, you can see, I'm gonna pull it up to the camera, hopefully it stays clear, but you can see how the toe not only dives down to the floor, but it also twists toward that relationship toe, okay? So this is her faith and trust. This is her relationship or her go with the flow toe. And so when I see a toe that hides itself under that relationship toe, what I'm seeing is somebody who relies very heavily on their relationships to give them validation, to help them feel like there's, there's meaning in their life, right? There is nothing wrong with feeling that way. It's part of the process of learning to love ourselves more. When we're in a state of challenge or things aren't showing up the way that we would like them to be showing up, we are often very reliant on the people around us. That's just how it works and that's okay. There is nothing wrong with that. So don't let anybody tell you there's anything wrong with that. Um, one of my passions in life is to work really hard not to teach to the wound because I don't want anybody stuck in the wound. I want people to reach for the triumph, to reach for the places in their life that are working and focus on that and keep that the, the exciting thing that we're striving for, right? Because if everything is energy, like we've been talking about, what we focus on is what we're attracting to us. So if we're focused on the wound, if we're focused on the self-healing, if we're focused on all the things that are going wrong, it makes sense then that we're just attracting to ourselves all of the things that go wrong, all of the things that create the wound. So when we shift that focus to the focus of where we want to be, and that's where that idea of like, we want to create this idea or this future for ourselves. We want to create this really successful business or we want to create an amazing relationship in our life. We want to, but that's really putting it out in the future. So we have to kind of 
center ourselves, come to a place of calm, come to a place of quiet, and focus on what we want right now. So if I were, in fact, I've written a couple of blogs in this way because it's a great exercise to do and it's really, really fun to do it too, or at least it is for me, is I get into that place of imagining what it is that I wanna bring to me. So if I wanna bring to me a career traveling around the world, speaking to audiences, maybe talking about my book, maybe sharing some of the wisdom that this life has blessed me with, right? Then I want to talk about what that looks like right here, right now. So I've written a blog that's, you know, I'm going to I'm going to also suggest that you guys look at a friend of mine has this group or really it's a it's a website, but in, you know, along with their website, they have the group, the page, blah blah blah, all that stuff, right? So it's called Masterful Manifestors. You may have seen an interview done uh, with me a couple of weeks ago. And with Ma Masterful Manifestors, one of the things that they do is every week they do something called This Is Me. And it's, you can just look up that hashtag, This Is Me. And you'll see some of the videos and or some of the writing that people have done around this idea which is to say that when we go to that place where we're really, really excited and we can, you know, close our eyes and imagine ourselves there and, and smell the smells and feel the feelings and notice what the weather is like, notice what you're wearing, notice who you're sitting with, notice like those kind of super, super exciting things. And we can talk from a place of being there, okay? So I wrote this article called, um, or this blog, called I Am Famous. And that's, I think, the most recent one that I've done for the public. I, I do this for myself a lot more than I do it for the public. But that it's so powerful because as I'm talking about it, I'm feeling it in my body. I'm feeling that energy flow straight up and down through my chakras. And it is crazy how powerful that energy feels and it feels really good and it feels really exciting and I can't wait for it to happen because it's happening right here, right now. Even though it's not officially happening right here, right now, it really is because I can feel it, I can see it, I can taste it, touch it, smell it, all of that kind of good stuff. And when you're in that state, it's amazing what the universe does to shift. It's kind of like the, the stairs in the Harry Potter movies, like the shifting stairs or the, or the Ecker drawings. Like it's, um, they just shift. The whole world shifts to bring everything that you want to you. It's so fun. It's so fun. Okay, so I'm going to go back to toe reading because I want to show you a little bit about what it looks like when things are going maybe better than, than the, the first image was kind of, she was stuck in a, in a place of, um, they are wonderful, is that what you're saying? Thank you. I, I, yeah, right, feeling that feeling, it just feels so good. It feels so good when we're in that place of, because it really creates that sense of peace, right? Okay. So I think that for the most part, and I'm gonna put this upside down because hopefully that left and right actually is on the left and right of the screen. <laughs> but um, what it looks like, it, so on the left toe and on these toes, these toes are pretty much straight up. They pretty much come straight off the foot. But one of the jobs of a toe reader is to help get at the subconscious thoughts, feelings, and emotions, or the belief systems that we hold that keep us stuck in whatever it is that we're stuck in. So for this young lady, there's not a whole heck of a lot of stuckness going on here, but there is just enough that we would still be able to work on it. Now, one of the things that I notice is that all of these toes is super close together, okay? So what do you think that means in toe reading? 
if your if your clothes are <laughs> clothes <laughs> if your toes are super close together what do you think that means if if we're if we're vessels of receiving information okay if if you can imagine that that's what we are and if our our god universe source whatever whatever you want to call it if that energy wants to share information with us do you think that i would sit here like this or do you think i would sit here like this right i think it i mean i feel like it's pretty obvious but what's really interesting is when we go to actually physically move into that wide open I don't know about you guys, but the very first time that I ever did that, I was, it was, God, it was back in the 80s. <laughs> um, I was listening to a Louise Hay, uh, actually it was on a v VHS. <laughs> oh my gosh. So I was listening to this very cool Louise Hay VHS. And the very first thing that she said when she came out on stage was, and if you don't know Louise Hay, please look her up. She's absolutely fantastic, amazing. Uh, the godmother of affirmations, as she's known. Um, but she, she came out on stage and everybody was clapping and going you know, crazy over her presence and being so in awe of being with her. And she comes out onto the stage and she opens her arms way wide open and she says, I am open and my reminder to wrap it up just came on. <laughs> so if you have any questions, now's the time to type them. Um, but so she says, I'm open and willing to receive all that is good. Okay. And she says, okay, now you, now everybody in the audience do that. Spread your arms wide open and say it with passion and with excitement, I am open and willing to receive all that is good. And I have to tell you, the very first time I did that, I, I held my arms out and I went, oh, that feels so uncomfortable. <laughs> like I, I physically saw myself melt back into the small person that I was behaving like. And it was really uncomfortable in the best way possible because it was a really good um it was a really good exercise to help me see that i was playing small that i was like oh yeah i don't like that that feels really uncomfortable to me so so when i see toes that are closed like that that's the image that it brings to my mind it brings, so even though these toes are beautifully straight and they're all coming straight forward, there's almost no space between them. So there's a, there's a very much a, a close, a closed off attitude of, you know, I kind of think of it as like self-protection. And so if you're protecting yourself from bad things happening to you, guess what you're also protecting yourself from? Good things happening to you. I mean, it makes logical sense, but we don't necessarily think of it that way all the time. So, so because I see her toes super close together like that, when I look at this left toe here, what would normally look like a really good, solid, she's showing up, she has a lot of faith and trust, she's doing everything that she needs to do in order to be able to be the best version of herself. What I'm seeing is that she, her, her baby toe is falling short of her destiny, of her purpose for being here. Her baby toe is not measuring up, literally. I mean, like, so, and believe it or not, this toe right here can change. When she adjusts those ideas that she's not good enough or she's not worthy or she needs to take the back seat and not be in the spotlight or whatever limiting belief it is that she has, this toe will look longer. Now it doesn't grow, there's nothing that happens that makes it 
longer per se, but boy, does it look longer and it looks more even and it shows up more, um, it shows, it shows up more. I don't, I don't even know the word I'm trying to say. It just shows up like she wants to show up in that space of being open and willing to receive all that is good and not cowering from it. Right? So I don't know what else to talk about today, but we're already at 30 minutes and I love the faith and trust subject because it's such a big one. Because without faith and trust, you cannot get that prosperity and abundance and keep it. You might be able to attain prosperity and abundance on some level in some way, but that faith and trust piece of it will always keep you from, um, from having more or having as much as you know you're meant to have or you know you're capable of receiving, right? Um, Cindy Rose says, uh, you are spot on tonight. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, thank you. I'm so, so happy that that is how it is coming across. Phew! <laughs> um, so next month in February, we're going to be talking about prosperity and abundance. So we spent all of January talking about faith and trust so that we can come to a place of peace around having faith and trust that we are open and willing to receive all that is good in February. So come on and join me in February for the prosperity and abundance piece of this puzzle. And let's talk more about that right baby toe and how that's showing up. Because I think we're all ready to receive a little bit more cash, right? Aren't we? I mean, I don't think I know very many people who aren't. <laughs> so thank you so much for being here tonight. I truly appreciate it. If you're interested in a private toe reading, let me know. Otherwise, if you follow me on social media at Soul Heart Entertainment or Jamie Allen Bishop, I do provide plenty of content. So come on back and see me. And um, thank you very much, Veronica, for being here. So glad you enjoyed my energy. This is me, Wasi Wog, what you see is what you get. This is just me. And I'm so grateful to social media for allowing me to show up as me. <laughs> it's so fun. All right, well have a great night. Great toes day to you and have a great rest of the week. And hopefully I'll see you back here next Tuesday at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time for another toes day session. And if you have any questions or comments, let me know below and I'll definitely get back to you. Bye for now.